Okay, so this is going to be the last uh, knife video that I'm filming for now. Of course, you're watching this like, I don't know, a month and a half before it's going to be up. Um, so depending on how things go, there might be more coming, uh, or this might be the last one for a while. On uh, new pocket knives anyway, I'll probably do some sort of collection update video or um, something like that. Um, if I don't get any more knives, but this is going to be the last new knife that I know about as of now. Um, and this is another knife from the Rough Rider Classic Carbon in this black micarta. Um, this is the camp knife. Um, now I was hoping to carry this in my back pocket like I used to do with a Victorinox. Um, but it's really thick, so I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> Um, but anyway, it's got this main spear blade here. Of course, like I said, this is in the carbon steel, the uh, T10 carbon that Rough Rider uses. It's got half stop. The action's really gritty. It probably needs to be cleaned out better. Um, yeah, it probably needs to be cleaned out better. I did try to clean it out, but... Sometimes it's hard to do that. Sometimes you really need to work it. Um, the covers on this one, uh, this one doesn't have a rough side like the half hawk that I got did. This one's smooth on both sides, but it still feels good. Uh, it doesn't feel like plastic. Um, it's got this bail here that pretty much stops like there, um, but we'll move. It just tighten up a little bit there. Um, but you can still move it over in front of the blade, um, which isn't great. Um, other tools on the knife, it's got a bottle opener screwdriver here. And this uh, blade or tool, or however you want to look at it, I think did have some very slight side-to-side -side play. I can't feel it now. I think it had some very slight side-to-side -side play, nothing crazy. Um, this tool, which I could have went without has a lot of play can probably it's not going to focus because my phone hates me stop focusing on the background yeah I don't know if you guys can see that or not but it's got considerable uh, blade play and I guess this is supposed to be a punch or an all um but it closes like resting on the liner almost. And it actually rubs the uh, the blade of the knife a little bit up here. You can see right there, it's rubbing the blade. Not, not anything uh, super like horrible about that or anything. It's just rubbing a little bit. Um, and then it's got a can opener. Uh, Tobias did a video on this and his can opener. Uh, this part was like super bent. I think mine's good, it looks like. Um, you know, it looks pretty straight. Now this does rub the liner a little bit when you go to close it. You can see it's kind of resting up against that liner. Not a huge deal. Uh, these Rough Riders are really inexpensive knives. I think this one was $17 or something. Uh, no blade play on the blade, which is the important part to me. Uh, no blade play on the blade, and there's some very slight blade play on the bottle opener. And those are probably the two tools that I would use the most on a knife like this. Um, after I got this knife, I was kind of like, why did I order a camp knife again? Because it's not like I collect camp knives or anything. I think I just kind of thought it was cool to have a camp knife. Uh, to have like an example of a camp knife. So now I do have an example of a camp knife, and it is in carbon steel, which is what I prefer with my traditional pocket knives. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be carrying this in my back pocket like I kind of thought I might, uh, just because it's so, like, thick. Like, this knife only has two back springs, uh, but this center spacer is huge. The center spacer is, like, the size of a back spring on some knives. And then it's got these other two spacers on the outside, which are huge. And then the liners, um, 
But yeah, I mean, the knife is just super thick. Let me see if I can get like a... This isn't completely overhead, so it's not going to look that great. But let me... I think you're not going to be able to tell how wide it is. But let me see here. This is about three quarters of an inch wide. Which is an incredibly, like, thick knife. Which makes it feel really good in your hand. Like, it feels good. Like, you just open that main blade and you're gripping it to, like, you know, carve a stick or something. Uh, it feels good. But I feel like once you put it in your pocket, uh, you're going to not like the fact that it's that thick. Um, so that's kind of annoying. Um, the blades are all kind of, like... Uh, all jumbled together and everything. It doesn't look pretty like some of the like Stockman knives and stuff do where they're really artfully like the sheep's foot's like slightly bent off to the side and like everything fit together really well. Uh, this knife is not that. This is done uh, very sloppily and everything. But once again, this knife was I think $17. So it's not a huge deal. Um, if you want to watch a video of somebody who knows a little bit more about camp knives has a thing for camp knives you go over to tobias gibson he did a video on this a while back um and his is a little bit slightly different like i said i think his can opener was bent um but he also has a video on this knife if you want to see somebody else talk about it but anyway that's the rough rider camp knife in the classic carbon with the black micarta uh, covers and um, something else before I go does anybody else really hate these boxes like this box is gigantic like it, it is huge you can you can kind of see this box is huge it's magnetic it's got this like foam thing in here that you put the knife in I guess to like display it if you want to be really proud about your, you know, less than $20 pocket knife. And I mean, it does look pretty. Like if you just wanted to put this in a case and just have it look like, like that. Or maybe if you were like a flea market knife dealer or something and you just wanted to have it sit in like your case and look like that and try to sell it or whatever, you know, cool. But the thing is, like, I'm not... This box is gigantic. I'm not keeping this box because number one, this is a Rough Rider knife. It's not ever going to be worth anything. At least I highly doubt it's ever going to be worth anything. So the box is just going to get thrown away. And the fact that it's such a huge box uh, just takes up a whole lot of room in the trash can. I, I would rather Rough Rider focus on stuff like, um, you know, fixing their slight imperfections they have on some of their knives and, uh, I don't know, maybe offer a better, uh, cover material. I'd really like to see a carbon rough rider with bone handles, but they haven't done that yet. Um, but anyway, uh, that's the end of that rant about the rough rider boxes. I just don't get it. I think case and Boker have it figured out where they just give you a little cardboard box that holds the knife and then you throw that away and it takes up no space. Or if you don't want to throw it away, and you want to store it in the box and whatever and like stack them it takes up very little room whereas these rough rider boxes take up a whole lot of room and it's annoying um because unfortunately unless you're great eastern cutlery um having a box isn't really going to increase the value of your knife by a lot like the great eastern cutlery uh knives like if they have the tube i think people really want the tubes um, but I don't think anybody's going to care if the, the Rough Rider box, uh, if the Rough Rider knives, if the Rough Rider knife comes with a box, I don't think anybody's going to care about that. Um, but anyway, I'm done now, like actually done now ranting about the box. Um, like I said, this might be the last uh, video on a new knife for a while, uh, but I don't really know yet. Um. I'm going to start being more careful with my money and start trying to save it because of some stuff that's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, there'll still be collection videos and I'll probably do 
some sort of video on like uh, the knives I carry and how they're holding up and stuff uh, at some point and of course hiking videos and just other random things that I feel like filming too that sometimes end up on here. Uh, this channel is pretty much just my uh, like fun thing I like to do. I just like to put up things that I like to do. So who knows what you'll see next. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to stop talking before I go on forever. Uh, and I hope you guys have a good day.